Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There was some good news out of the corporate sector this week, with the CEO Circle having selected seven medium-sized black businesses to be nurtured international champions. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss this development. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to the CEO Circle and this initiative? Well, the CEO Circle really ar arose in during desperate times when we were, looked like we were going to be downgraded by the ratings agencies um, after some late night cabinet reshuffles by the former president, Jacob Zuma, and then the reappointment of Praveen Gordon as finance minister. So they rallied round the new minister and there was initiatives launched to try and stave off the uh, downgrade to junk. As we know, uh, two uh, ratings agencies did junk South Africa, Fitch and SMPs Global, and we've just hanging on by a thread with Moody still keeping us at an investment grade. So uh, post those uh, developments, there's been talk amongst these uh, CEO circle, which represents South Africa's top 50 companies as to how to stimulate uh, small businesses and medium businesses, medium sized businesses. So we know the SME fund was launched uh, last year and that has about uh, 1.4 billion rand from those shareholders that is going really into small businesses. Um, and trying to get it's from venture capital to university technology funds. So it's, it's, it's really sort of nascent or small businesses that are trying to be nurtured. And then there's this initiative that was announced in March uh, to select larger size black businesses. Companies are between 50 and 100 million rand in turnover and trying to nurture those into national champions with the revenues of 500 million plus, uh, 500 million to a billion. And uh, that the process that was carried out was to allow people to be nominated or firms to be nominated in that category uh, and uh, to participate in the CEO Circles Entrepreneurs uh, Awards program. And that's what took place this week where 143 black businesses were nominated. Uh, this process was then run by the SME fund uh, using a, uh, an outfit called Endeavor Scale-Up, which is an international enterprise uh, development initiative. And they whittled that down initially to 33 prospective candidates, then down to 13 candidates, and finally to these seven firms that were selected uh, uh, yesterday. And uh, what these companies will receive is access to this uh, incredible network of the top 50 companies, access to decision makers in that network, access to potentially to their supply chains and markets. Crucially, some mentorship out of those top 50 companies. So we've got sort of heavy hitters who are putting their names and reputations on the line. People like Stephen Kossoff, Michael Jordan, Norman Bazima have come to the fore and they're going to mentor these CEOs at some of these companies. And uh, then they're also going to potentially have access to capital and uh, uh, both debt and equity in their businesses with a very sort of tailored pathway to scaling up over the next three to five years to that sort of 500 million rand, uh, billion rand level. So it's quite an interesting initiative. It had a sort of a dragon's den kind of feel to it a little bit. And uh, these seven companies are now, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, they evolve. And the CEO circle has indicated that this will be an annual event. So they're going to be selecting similar type companies yearly for nurturing. Uh, they chose seven this year, it could have been one, it could have been 13, uh, and next year we'll have to see how they, they run the process. It might be a much more focused group, but they've made it clear that, of especially of that, that 33, so from 143 to 33, there's really some really solid and interesting businesses in there that also need to give get, get some attention. Uh, so it was an exciting thing to see that there's entrepreneur, entrepreneurial activity and uh, serious black businesses coming to the fore. What other initiatives are underway to support the business environment in South Africa? Well, uh, the, through the CEO Circle, we know the SME Fund that's, that's carrying on with its work. I suppose it's, uh, it's getting to the end of how much, uh, in terms of its initial capitalization, how much uh, money it's got left in the pot to disperse to small businesses. So it'll be interesting to see whether that gets scaled up uh, as well and gets taken to another level. And then, of course, uh, we know through the Job Summit and the Investment Summit that commitments have been made uh, to make certain investments in South Africa. Uh, and 
also to try and mitigate job losses. So business has put its name and signature to certain ventures in South Africa. And I think the frustration at the moment is, are we seeing those really coming to fruition? Are commitments being met? And in some ways, you know, there's definitely activity happening. I think, for instance, the SAPI project was named as part of the, the first cohort of investment projects. We know that's definitely going ahead. And there's several others that are going ahead. But I think the, there's a, a sort of feeling that business is kind of keeping to its bargain, not, but not 100%. And uh, I think there's a need f uh, to show visibly that it is sticking to the commitments that's made both at the job summit and at the, the inaugural investment summit. So that by, by the time we get to uh, the second uh, investment summit, there's some real activity and a, a serious visibility that business is playing its part. What message can we take from this in the current context of general frustration and unhappiness at the state of the economy? Yes, I think uh, it's interesting that the CEO circle announcement came this week in a week where we saw Business uh, Unity South Africa's leader, uh, Sipo Pichana, uh, indicating that there's serious frustration in the big business community around the state of uh, the economy, but also the pace of reforms from government, as well as we heard from the, the CEO of Nedbank this week that there's deep frustration that things that need to be done are not being done, especially around Eskom. Um, where I think there was a feeling that because it's such a crisis at Eskom, there needs to be some urgent action taken there beyond what we've seen already. So we've seen the bailouts to Eskom, massive amounts of money being transferred from the fiscus, and we've seen a chief restructuring officer eventually uh, appointed. But I think that there's still a feeling that th there's a lack of uh, urgency at the pace of reforms at Eskom. And this is serious because it poses a fiscal risk to South Africa, we're really seeing the transfers, we're really seeing our debt uh, going out of control, our debt repayments rising. And because of that fiscal risk, it also poses a credit risk. And therefore our rating is really on an off's edge. And uh, Moody's, I think, is going to be looking at this very carefully as to whether South Africa can sustain that investment grade rating. And if it doesn't, and we junked, uh, which uh, is, is looking more and more likely you know, there's a, there's a risk t on so many different fronts to business and to investment and to ma keeping those commitments that were made back at the investment summit because the, the sort of uh, impact on sort of currency and the impact on the future growth tra trajectory as well as social stability in a rising unemployment environment are really real. So I think we're in a difficult position and business is, uh, you know, starting to make its voice heard about the need to really, for government to make some seriously tough decisions and to start moving on those decisions, not just talking about them. But on the other hand, uh, it's the message is that we're here and we're ready to support and we're going to show some resilience um, and we're going to do these sort of initiatives to try and, um, you know, where we can mitigate job losses also grow, grow some serious national champions of black businesses, as well as to start you know, really building this pipeline of small businesses. Without enterprise development, South Africa has no hope, not only of getting out of its low growth trap, but out of, of, but of dealing with this really terrible situation of unemployment, which on the narrow definition is now 29, 30%. And it's much worse when you look at the broader definition. So we, we're in a difficult spot business is uh, raising its voice around that, but it's also showing that it r remains a partner for government. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.